Hi there, it's Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Candida range of dietary supplements. Thanks for checking out my video today. Today I'm going to teach you how to really do a proper Candida diet. We're going to go through different steps of my Candida Crusher dietary approach. I've got a question here from a man called Joel in Chicago in the United States of America, and Joel's asking me if I can do a, a good a comprehensive video on the Candida diet. So Joel wants to know about anti-Candida diet, he wants to know some Candida recipes, he wants to know Candida foods to eat, Candida foods to avoid, and all those sorts of things. But before you check out my video, please click on the link in the description box below this video to download your 13-page free report. It's a report that, we, that I normally use for my new clients who come and see me uh, we, with yeast infection. They will get this free report. It's also a part of my book. And you now this report's worth at least $20, if not more. So it's yours for free. Just click on the link below and you can get you, it will take you to a page where you can download that, uh, that free report. I think you'll find it quite handy. So, Joel, let's go into this uh, Candida Crusher dietary approach. So, my Candida diet approach really involves three stages. Before I put people through the three stages, I generally like them to go through a big cleanup. So we'll tidy up the diet first. Generally, lifestyle and diet need a bit of a tidy up when people get serious about revitalizing their digestive function. And you know, if they really want to get well, they need to make some changes. But I'm not about making changes very quick with people. I prefer that they slowly make change. Slow changes, and generally over a period of many, many weeks, will usually mean that new habits become formed new lifestyle and dietary habits become formed. And when these become formed, slowly they become permanent in your life. And when these habits become permanent, it means that these healthy habits will ensure that you don't get a repeat of the old symptoms and that you stay well for life. So that to me is what it's all about. Not just eradicating symptoms with pills or eradicating symptoms with a diet, but, but building incredible health and wellness through making lifelong permanent changes. Right, that's what we're all about. So the big cleanup is something you can read about at yeastinfection.org. So be sure to check yeastinfection.org out. That's got about a thousand of my articles uh, on that site. So, so let's look at stage one first. Stage one of the Candida Crusher diet approach is called the MEVI diet. It's M-E-V-Y, meat, eggs, vegetables, and yogurt. So let's look at that. Let's look at what the, the MEVI diet or the stage one approach really encompasses. So first thing we've got to do, of course, on the MEVI, which you should have already done on the big cleanup, is to get rid of all the processed and junk foods out of your diet. So if I go to your refrigerator and open it up, am I going to find lots of jars and bottles there with all sorts of sweet sauces or, or foods that have been in there for many days or even weeks? They all need to go into the garbage can. You need to get rid of all of those. Have a good look at your pantry and your kitchen bench and your freezer and start making some changes there. You know, All of these things could do with a, a big cleanup themselves. Cut back on the amount of foods that you buy when you go out in terms of takeaway food. So stopping off somewhere and buying a pizza or you know, getting donuts or getting food that are highly processed, you need to stop these habits because these are habits that are not going to be really good if you want to recover from a yeast infection or a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, what we call SIBO. SIBO and candida often go hand in hand. So avoid white sugar, white flour, soda drinks, takeaway foods, beer, alcohol, wine, you know, all these sorts of things in general. Any kind of candies or chocolates, these things all need to go. They just don't form any place really. Uh, in a digestive system if you want to recover from candida. So include liberal amounts of fresh, unprocessed and nutritional foods. So a good thing to do is to go to the farmer's markets. Well, you know, uh, Often you'll have sort of like markets around you and, and people will grow fresh produce and take them to these markets. This is a good opportunity for you to get really nice produce rather than the supermarket. You won't have a greengrocer around you that sells some good quality produce. And, you know, you can end up making good friends with these people and getting some really nice fresh stuff off them. Or if you wish, you know, do what I do is grow a lot of your own food. Uh, and that way you've got really nice fresh food uh, to eat all the time. 
it's fantastic to do that and at least you know that it's it's chemical and spray free there are no pesticides on it things like that so when you do buy at the supermarket uh, you know as you've heard before buy around the perimeter of the supermarket where the fresh foods are the meats and the vegetables rather than the processed foods internally in the supermarket in all the aisles because these foods are designed to last for you know days and weeks and even months in your pantry they're not really good for your digestion avoid sugar and sugar containing foods lots of sauces you get for example you know sweet chili sauce and shrimp sauce and oyster sauce and barbecue sauce and tomato sauce that all contain sugar and this is why people like these things they contain sugar and salt so lots of people also eat way too much salt on their diet salt does play a good role in our diet but many people eat way too much salt so watch out for salted foods and, and crappy foods containing salt like potato chips and pretzels uh, salt often craved by people with adrenal fatigue because they end up losing a lot of of their uh, sodium depletion through the urine they pee it out so they need to eat a lot of sodium people under stress often like foods full of sugar salt and fat when you um, you know, start understanding the connection between, between stress and health and you learn to relax a lot more, you'll find that your sodium and uh, sugar intake drop right off in your diet and you can rely a lot more on fresh, healthy, uh, wholesome foods. The fresher the foods, uh, you know, in terms of like nice fresh green vegetables and good quality lean meats, the better your gut is going to be. These foods uh, spoil quickly. They need to be cooked up and eaten. Don't store foods in the fridge. So I don't really need to go into all the detail on all the different kinds of vegetables you can eat and all the different kinds of fruits you can eat. Um, you can read about that at yeastinfection.org. I've written many articles on these, but let's just do a, a, a brief sort of look at the best kind of vegetables you can eat with candida. In my opinion, these are the deep green colored vegetables like spinach and beans, celery, uh, broccoli, cabbage, Many of these sorts of foods, there's a lot of them you can get uh, get hold of. Be careful initially of the high starch carbohydrate foods like pumpkin and squash and peas and sweet corn. Carrots to a lesser extent, but those foods I just mentioned, the sweet potato, the pumpkin. If you're in, in fall going into uh, winter, for example, you may tend to eat a lot of pumpkin and squash. And these foods do have quite a high sugar content. So for the first three or four weeks going into the Mevi diet, you want to cut out the high starch carbies foods only if you've got bad candida. If you've got minor candida, you may not need to cut them out. Sweet corn in, in, in spring, summer can be favored by a lot of people too. And sweet corn can be a bit on the sugary side. So the deep leafy green colored vegetables to a lesser extent, um, you know, don't tend to have so much of these sugars that candida can thrive on. But this is only a consideration if you've got serious candida, you know, bear that in mind. So avoid most fresh fruits and avoid all fruit juices and avoid all dried fruits, including sultanas, figs, raisins, dates, those sorts of things. Fresh fruits are okay, but let's just stick with fruits like uh, blueberries, pomegranates, avocados, uh, kiwi fruit is not too bad and a green apple. I found green apple to be okay with most people with yeast infection, so it's not an issue. Watch out for red apples. The fruits to particularly avoid are the very sweet fruits like melons, uh, bananas, pineapples, grapes especially. So they're very high sugar content, so you need to avoid those for a considerable period of time. Try not to eat the same foods every day. Try and rotate the kind of foods that you eat. Try and rotate the kind of proteins that you eat. Uh, you know, don't eat beef like every day, for example, or eat chicken every single day. Rotate them. And uh, it's really good for your digestion to do that. It's also going to be less challenging for your immune system. So when we take sugars out and rotate healthy foods, your immune system will certainly pick up. Let's look at the kind of meats you can eat. Uh, you may be a meat eater like me, or you may be a vegetarian. So we'll have a look at both of these kind of approaches. Meats generally are not favored at all by candida so you're not going to have a problem with fresh fish for example uh, lean beef lamb uh, very good protein source uh, and also eggs free-range eggs so free-range eggs and free-range chicken 
I certainly prefer well over commercial because they don't contain antibiotics or arsenic or chemicals like that. Arsenic is a, 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 a metal which is actually used as a kind of antifungal on poultry food. So if you're going to get commercial poultry, you could have all sorts of heavy metals or antifungals uh, you know, mixed in with the food or antibiotics actually uh, you know, sprayed on the food. Uh, you won't get that with free range. So free range eggs are a very good source of protein. I think biologically they're probably the best protein you can eat in terms of their amino acid content. Now, fresh fish is exceptional too, but try and avoid farm fish. Canned sardines and canned tuna are not too bad if they're well, packed in spring water. Don't uh, get too worried about the mercury content of tuna and fishes like that. Albacore tuna is quite safe to eat. Uh, have a look at some uh, interesting information on the internet about high um, fishes that contain mercury also contain high selenium levels in general. So unless you're eating shark, you should be okay with a lot of different ocean port species. So we spoke about the different vegetables, we've talked about the fruits, so avoid the high sugar fruits, avoid fruit juices, avoid dried fruits. Avoid high fat meats. I don't find pork to be uh, a bacon to be particularly good meats to eat. So foods to avoid when it comes to meat are processed meats, deli from the delicatessen, you know, uh, pastrami, salami, uh, ham. Those sorts of meats are sort of crappy meats to eat. They're not really good. It's like those bits of cheese with plastic around those plastic cheeses. They're junk. So fermented foods and cultured foods, if you can incorporate them, are fantastic in the Mevi approach. So sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, uh, kumis, uh, there's many different kinds. You need to find one of these foods that you like and then try and incorporate small amounts into your diet. So this stage is very important, stage one, because what we're doing is we're setting the stage for a diet that's going to start building up your health to a very high level. And we're also uh, educating you, you know, on good foods to eat. And hopefully this will be something you're not going to do just for a month or two, but lifelong, right? So that's what I'd like you to do. So this is really the induction phase, is the MEVI, getting you into eating properly. This phase lasts anywhere from two to three weeks up to three months. There's no timelines here. Nothing set in stone, right? So... Be prepared in case you aggravate. So if you aggravate on a healthy diet approach, you need to back off a little bit. You could be eating too much of one particular food. You may not be chewing properly. You may be eating too much in general. You may not be relaxing enough. You may still be including some foods into your diet which are not really good. So just try and check it out what you're doing. You could be taking antifungal dietary supplement too much of it and killing too quick when your gut's in a transition state, going from bad bacteria to good bacteria. So be patient and kind on yourself. Don't push yourself too hard. Let's talk about grains and breads and things like that to eat. There's a lot of talk that bread is no good on an anti-candida diet. This is not true. This is simply not true. I've worked with now close to 20,000 patients with gut problems, and I can tell you now that gluten is an issue with some people, but not the majority. Most people can tolerate some wheat in their diet, but we're not talking about five or six slices of, of commercially baked bread with peanut butter or jam on them. All right, so if you want to have wheat in your diet, take out the commercial bread first and go for flat bread. Just plain flour, wholemeal flour, a water, and a bit of salt made into a dough, rolled flat, and then baked on a griddle, a bit like a chapati. And you know you can put nice salad on there. You can put chicken, uh, shredded chicken on there, or some beef. Uh, you know, these, this is a very healthy lunch to have. Uh, you can do a similar thing with corn. You can do a similar thing with buckwheat. So quinoa, buckwheat. You know, these sorts of flours uh, and grains are good to incorporate into your diet. But again, small amounts. You don't need large amounts to. Uh, you know, don't really load your diet up top heavy in grains. But the same goes for loading up your diet top heavy in any food. Too much protein, you know, red meat, too much beans or legumes, too much vegetables. Uh, so I see these YouTube videos of people going like hardcore raw vegan. And other people go hardcore red meat. So anything hardcore is going to give you hardcore problems. All right. So it's all about moderation and balance. I prefer to have small amounts of protein in the diet, quality balanced by a larger amounts of, of vegetables. 
I think that to me is a more sensible approach. An Asian doctor friend of mine once said that people in the Western world have got it completely the wrong way around. He said, you people have a large piece of meat on the plate, small vegetable. He said, in Japan, we have small meat, large vegetable. Clever idea. Let's look at rice. Rice is good. Brown rice, small amounts to start with. Try brown basmati. Try, try wild rice, the black stuff. It's quite good. Try and avoid the white rice. If you're eating a lot of white rice at the moment, mix it with brown. 60 brown, 40 white, and slowly move uh, to the brown. Brown's a much better option. More B vitamins, more fiber. You know, it's a, it's a better grain for the gut in general to eat. So try and move away from the uh, from the from the white rice in general. But small amounts of rice are quite quite okay to have in your diet. Not a problem. Quinoa also when cooked properly, it's nice cooked in chicken stock, for example. It's very good to incorporate um, with the candida diet approach. And again, small amounts, common sense. Right? So, did you get constipated? Did you get bowel problems on the MEFI approach? If you did, you may want to eat less meat in your diet. If you load up too much on protein, uh, that could block you up. A long time ago, when I worked with patients on the Atkins diet, I found in the induction phase, the first two weeks, many would get constipated. And that's because they ate too much fat and protein straight away. And they didn't balance it with enough um, you know, of the vegetables. The other thing I forgot to tell you is sprouts. Sprouts are fantastic to eat. In fact, I'm sprouting about four different kinds of grains at the moment uh, in my kitchen downstairs. You know, I've got mung beans, alfalfa beans. I've got these New Zealand sort of organic kind of bean. I'm not sure the name of them. And I sprout them all in these jars, uh, you know, just with lids with some stainless steel mesh in them. And it's fantastic to incorporate into the diet. These are full of nutrition. So I sprout them away from the sunlight. And then for the last day or two, I finish them off in the light where they green up. So these contain lots of folic acid and a huge amount of minerals and vitamins that really help to build up your health. So you can put sprouts into your diet too. Another good addition. So stick with this MEVI approach for a few weeks. Generally the first three, four weeks, you'll start to pick up and you'll feel better. After you've been on the MEVI approach for a little while, we're going to put you into the low allergy phase. So the hyperallergenic phase is very clever. Because what we're doing now is we've improved your gut, we've removed the junk, We've put more enzymes, vitamins, and minerals into your diet. You're learning to chew properly. You're relaxing more. You're sleeping well. Now we're going to improve your immune function to a higher level by being more selective with the foods that could potentially challenge your immune system. We're going to take them out. This is very important because many people with SIBO or SIBO and Candida have leaky gut or they have food allergies and food intolerances. So if you haven't already done so, phase two or stage two of the candida crusher approach, we're going to take out cow's milk. We're going to take out most dairy products. Butter is always fine. Unsalted, uh, good quality butter is fine to have. Small amounts of mozzarella uh, uh, cheese aren't too bad. Uh, Parmesan and mozzarella, small amounts are okay, but try and keep away from all the other cheeses if you can. Don't grate cheese on everything. It's no good for your gut. Cream is, take the cream out. Yogurt is fine if it's a good quality sour acidophilus organic yogurt, preferably from health food shop or make your own. Small bowl every night uh, after dinner is good to have. Um, kefir, small amounts of kefir, uh, again made from milk or coconut cream, or uh, coconut milk are fine to have. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the low allergy phase, dairy generally be cautious, take cow's milk out, take out bananas and pineapple and oranges. Those three foods are very, in my opinion, strongly uh, allergenic with many people. Um, limes and lemons are fine, but take out mandarins and tangelos and kumquats and oranges and that sort of citrus category, take them out. Chocolate, gone. You've got to get rid of chocolate. Don't argue with me, just take chocolate out of your diet. Take raw cacao out of your diet for at least three or four weeks. Take stevia out. If you've got serious candida, take stevia and xylitol out as well for the first month and then slowly incorporate them back. So the low allergy phase also means no sugar, even more so. Now you've got to be even more tough on yourself and really drill down that sugar because sugar can really affect your immune system. Research at Cornell University years ago found that within five minutes of consuming small amounts of white refined sugar, the neutrophil or the white blood cell count dropped right off with people. So we don't want to 
for you to get any kind of infection. We don't want you to uh, set up any allergies or hypersensitivities. And you'll achieve that by just cleaning up your diet even more in stage two. Okay. When you've gone through stage two after three or four weeks, you should be starting to feel pretty darn good. And most of my patients come back and say, I'm feeling fantastic. When you're feeling great, at this stage, then you're starting to think about the re-implementation or phase three, the food introduction diet. Now, stage one and two together in, in I'd say 75% of cases is anywhere between four weeks to about six to eight weeks. But it, there's no time limit. I mean, I've got some patients that stay on the Mevi diet for a year before they go into the re-implementation. Right? So with the third stage, it's mandatory, just like the first stage. You have to do these stages. The second stage is not mandatory, but it's clever to do um, if you've been sick for a long time. We're now returning your diet back to normal. Now, that's why I call the yeastinfection.org site getting you back to normal is we want you to have a normal, healthy gut so you can have a normal, healthy life. So now what I want you to do is carefully test the food. So I want you to get a piece of paper and write down all the foods that you eat, the foods that you may have taken out previous, okay, including candy, ice cream, beer, wine, pretzels, whatever you've had, any kind of crap that you've had in your diet, write everything down on a piece of paper. And then behind each food selection or drink selection, you're going to write one, two, or three. So you've got another small column you make down the right side of that food. So three are the foods you love the most. Two are the foods that you really enjoy eating. But, you know, three obviously is the stuff that you really love. And one are the foods you can give or take. So let's say put one with broccoli, okay? Let's, two, let's put two with something like chicken. And let's put three with ice cream or beer or pretzels or whatever it, whatever it is that you love to eat. Now, the foods that you're going to introduce, if you're not already eating them, are the foods with one. So the foods that you can give or take go first into your diet. And then you incorporate one or two foods at a time for a period of you know three days, four days, or up to a week. And then once you've implemented most of those foods, you can move to the grade two foods. Okay, implement those again very gently and slowly. And the foods you bring last into your diet are the third grade. All right, these are the foods you love the most. So don't be in a hurry to bring the beer back. Don't be in a hurry to bring the wine back. If you start in immediately introducing these foods again, you could set up a leaky gut, burping, bloating, gut problems. And before you know it, the candida grows back again and you've got big problems. And you'll get anxiety or disappointed and then email me saying, this is a crap approach, it doesn't work. This approach does work. I can guarantee it works because I've used this program now for over 20 years with thousands and thousands of patients. It's a sound protocol. If you follow it properly, it works. The big thing we haven't discussed because we're talking about the candida diet is the lifestyle. Now, we can't spend 20 minutes in this video talking about lifestyle, but I can tell you now, lifestyle, in my opinion, is 75% of recovery. So this video is really about 25% of recovery. So if you ain't got the lifestyle right, all of the advice I've given you is all a waste of time. Getting to bed on time, as soon as you're fatigued or tired, you need to get to bed. Relaxing when you eat your meals, chewing properly. Learning to laugh a lot more about life and not take things seriously. All right? Keeping away from pharmaceutical medications. Keeping away from negative people going for walks once or twice per day or actively engaging in exercise, avoiding toxic or negative people, doing something you love to do. I mean, I love my job. I love making videos. I love seeing patients. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. So enjoying your life is going to really mean that your digestive system, uh, your brain's talking well with your gut and your gut's talking well with your brain. The patients I see with the best digestive systems are usually happy people. They're happy with their life. They're happy with their partners or their job. So you've got to be happy. Otherwise, it's just not going to work for you. Now, we're coming to an end with this video. So I want you to check out yeastinfection.org and please do my video. Uh, do my, sorry, my quiz. Uh, be sure to do my Candida quiz if you haven't already done that quiz. Just a reminder to click on the link down below in the description box to get your free 13-page report on the Candida foods. It's a really good summary and more on what we've spoken about in this video.
Also, don't forget to check out uh, Candida, my, my line of Candida dietary supplements, which I think are a perfect complement to the diet and the lifestyle. So after working with so many thousands of patients, I worked out that people need the best kind of foods, they need the ultimate kind of lifestyle, and they need the best kind of supplements. And that's why I created the Kanzida range for people like you to complement this kind of dietary approach. You can often do this at home and get yourself well without going to see a doctor. So it's quite simple. So just follow the protocol as I've outlined on yeastinfection.org. And I think, you know, the right food, the right attitude, the right lifestyle, the right supplement, you're going to get the perfect outcome. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and keep giving me uh, you know, some feedback on the kind of videos that you want. So I hope that was a, a good reply for you, Joel, from Chicago. It was a long-winded reply, but I hope you've really um, gained some good information out of this video. Thanks for tuning in.